What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Tesla video. Uh, I have seven tips and tricks for driving your Tesla in the winter. Uh, I did one of these videos last year and the Tesla software has updated quite a bit since then. So I want to do an updated video uh, of driving your Tesla in the winter to driving your Tesla in the cold. Uh, with me today to do this video, I have Mother Funker Sr. Hello everybody. Hey, look at all that white stuff on the top edge of your screen. Yeah, that is snow. And that's why we're here. Excellent. So, number one, the snowflake icon. Uh, it will pop up here. So, right where you have your energy bar, so you can see it like green, like it's the battery icon, it's green. Uh, you're going to see a little snowflake icon. When you get that snowflake icon, it means you're going to have limited regen and you're gonna have, uh, like not all the energy in your battery is gonna be available to you in your drive. So uh, as your battery warms up, the snowflake icon will disappear and you'll get back all the energy that's available to you in your battery. But until then, you have limited battery access. Uh, basically, you just have to have your battery warm up and I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks about that uh, going forward. The other one is limited regen. You'll notice that there are dots here, and let me see if I can like zoom in. There are dots here, and as your car heats up, those dots will disappear, and that means your regen will come back. Uh, what is limited regen? It all has to do with the braking. So as you let go of your pedal, regen will slow your vehicle down and put energy back in the battery. So if your regen is limited, that process of braking is much uh, greatly removed you, you're basically coasting so you make sure you have your foot ready on the uh, brake pedal in case of emergencies and also you're not really getting any uh, any juice back into your battery so that is basically the snowflake icon we talked a little bit of regen uh, we'll come back to it but uh, number two I want to talk about is leaving your Tesla plugged in so you really want to leave your car plugged in at all times. This will just maintain uh, your battery warmth. Uh, it'll help in the winter. It's something that Tesla really uh, suggests. It's a really huge suggested thing that Tesla recommends. Uh, they say it's good, not even in the winter, it's good in the summer, it's good all year round. It's just good for your battery. So I know like a lot of people have a phobia about like leaving their cell phones plugged in or tablets or laptops or whatever with your car with the way the tesla battery works you want to keep it plugged in all the time especially in the winter uh so that's just leaving your tesla plugged in in fact if you look at the owner's manual it is uh, a detail there that it is highly recommended by tesla themselves that that's to, what i was saying yeah keep it all by, by tesla yeah so uh that is leaving your tesla plugged in uh Number three I want to talk about is using the scheduled uh, departure or recondition, reconditioning before driving. So if you go to your battery uh, here, you can schedule a departure time. And I talked about this in a video when this update came out, but you can start your charge at a certain time. Uh, the one you really want to use is departure at a time. So if you know what time you're leaving, set this. Uh, because I actually just had this question on Twitter a couple of days ago. Someone like direct message me and said hey i charged my battery the night before because my battery is heated on my drive home and it charges quicker uh should i do it in the morning and i really suggest to do it in the morning because you want your battery warm when you're driving because you won't get the snowflake icon so you get full access to your battery your car will be heated in the morning uh and it's just better all around so if you know what time you're leaving definitely use the scheduled departure time so if you schedule the departure time uh, what the charger will do is it will calculate how much time it'll take to charge your battery fully based on how much is remaining and it'll start at a specific time so that when it reaches its full peak that you've set it for whether it's 90 80 or 100 percent it will coincide with your departure time so that's why you'll have full regen nice warm vehicle everything ready to go right at that time that you're leaving yeah so that's like when i said we're going to go back to regen this is basically like one of the best things you can do to avoid these dots uh the regen dots when you're when you're driving uh the next one i want to talk about is conserving energy so there's a few things you can do for here uh 
number one is to limit acceleration. So uh, we're going to talk about driver profiles, but real quick, you want to be on chill rather than standard, and uh, just to eliminate your uh, limit your acceleration, you want to be going slower because uh, especially uh, uh, you've got block ice and uh, you know just basic ice, snow conditions. It does get more slippery in the winter, so it's just common sense to uh, not to uh, uh, go accelerate too fast, particularly or especially uh, starting off from a standstill, like a stop sign yeah. or a stoplight. Well, it's mostly for a battery aspect, too, because your battery is already reduced uh, because of the cold weather, weather so you don't want to accelerate quickly to use even more battery-powered like further uh the other one i want to talk about in terms of battery power is the heated seats so once your climate in your car is set so whatever you set it to i have mine set to 19 right now but let's say you set it to 21 it's a cold day your car is nice and warm you want to really lower the cabin temperature uh because it takes more energy to heat up the whole cabin than it does the heated seats so one of the suggestions from Tesla is get your car to the temperature you like, and once you feel comfortable, reduce it and use the heated seats to increase the warmth of your car. Uh, that way you're using less energy, right? So uh, in terms of energy use, you want to accelerate less, and you want to uh, definitely use the heated seats uh, to help you reduce your energy usage. And of course, you're only heating the seat that uh, where either yourself, the driver, or passengers are. You don't necessarily have to heat the other seats. That's not going to help for your energy uh, savings. It, however, if you want to heat up the battery quicker, you can turn on all the seats uh, to heat them up, and you can actually get your regen quicker if you heat up all the batteries. So I actually did a video with uh, Mark, the aka the backseat baller, on one of the updates. And when I showed up, my regen and his regen were different. We're trying to do like a speed difference uh, between one of the uh, updates. And I actually turned on all my heated seats to get my regen back quicker. So we're at a uh, the same like regen percentage wise. But anyway, that is uh, energy usage. You want to conserve energy. Don't, don't accelerate as quick and use your heated seats. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is putting your wipers in uh, service mode. So, uh, if you go to service, and then you can click wiper service mode, uh, basically what it does is, here, let me, let me redo this so you guys can see, I'll zoom in here. So basically, you click wiper service mode, and you can see my wipers come up like so. Uh, the reason why you do this is, uh, if you don't have it in wiper service mode, the wipers are like down, tucked in, tucked in. with wiper service mode enabled, they stay out. So the purpose of that, of course, is as you heat your vehicle uh, remotely, you're preparing to leave, you turn on your climate, uh, all the heat is blowing right onto the wiper, which may have ice formation on it, uh, and it'll help with uh, thawing everything out and keeping them clean, ready for the drive. They also won't get stuck inside the cavity, or the cavity area, yeah. So... You definitely want to use uh, the wiper service mode when you remember you have the chance if you know it's going to snow. Uh, for now, I'm just going to disable it because the snow's already on the ground. Uh, you can reposition your wipers and mirrors. So this is a big one. You don't want to have uh, auto fold mirror on because if it freezes and your mirrors get stuck like folded in, it's kind of problematic. So under quick controls, you want to click... Uh, mirrors sorry so quick controls click mirrors and then it says mirror auto fold and you can turn it off uh you'll notice something too as i do all this it says save right it saves it at the top so let's let's jump ahead here uh this is something i recommended last year so i'm starting off with my base profile that i usually drive with then i'm going to go to driver profile settings i'm going to call it winter and then i'm going to hit create profile the reason why I'm doing this is the Mother Franker one sets all my driver profile settings that I'm used to, and then I called it Winter, and it's like a clone of that one. So now, when I go to any of these settings and I go to adjust them, it's going to be set on my Winter profile, 
And then if I go back to Mother Franker, that's like my summertime non-winter profile. So anyway, going back to what I was saying, you want to click uh, mirrors, and then you want to unclick uh, auto fold, and you can unclick auto tilt. So now my mirrors are only going to stay out. They're never going to fold in, just, because, just in case there's like ice or whatever. I want them out rather than moving back and forth. Move, if the mirrors are moving or tilting, uh, if there's ice or if they're frozen, uh, you may damage your mirrors. Um, so you don't wanna you wanna avoid that. So you don't really need to uh, turn that feature on in the cold. Yeah. Uh, the last pair of settings I want to talk about that gets saved under my winter profile is uh, under driving again acceler acceleration. We're saying we want to make it low because uh, you want to conserve energy. And then regen braking, you want to set it to low uh, because you want to slow down uh, at a slower pace. You don't want to come to a full stop right away uh, because, again, ice on the ground and stuff like that, it's just safer. And then stopping mode, uh, as much as I love hold, I got really used to it, I really like it, you definitely want to use creep. Uh, the reason why I use creep is uh, when you're starting out, you want to start out like if you're at a stop position, you want to start out going slower. So creep will allow you to like creep up at a slower sp speed where you can go through the ice without sliding. So creep is just generally safer. So go to driving profile, set it to chill, regen braking to low and stopping mode to creep. Uh, if you get stuck in snow or anything, there is also slip start, uh, which will help you uh, just in case. You have to hold your foot on the brake for it to trigger on and then you can see here it's a slip start enabled uh if your foot's not on the brake you can't actually uh enable it so anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed uh these seven main tips and tricks of using your tesla in the winter uh if you guys have snow or cold climate def definitely hope this helped Yes, and uh, there may be uh, other tips or tricks if anybody wants to submit them. Uh, we can always do a uh, update uh, maybe next season. Yeah, definitely. And I think just because Tesla keeps changing their software, I'm sure I'll be doing something next year again with like, hey, these are the new tips and tricks with new stuff, right? So if you guys have any suggestions, leave a comment down below. Let us know uh, if I missed anything that might be helpful to anyone else that's uh, watching this video make sure to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video do subscribe for the latest and greatest tesla content and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time